When I talk in support of Julian Assange, I normally rail, rail at the government, this government, the United States government, the British government, about the terrible injustice being meted out to Julian. But today I'm going to quite deliberately take a more sombre, a more grounded approach to my, uh, to my three minutes I've been allocated. And that's just to set the scene. Now I first met Julian at the Melbourne Writers' Festival in 2004 when I was uh, on a panel speaking about a, a little book I'd written about my own whistleblowing experience over the Iraq war. And after the session, this youngish, good-looking, blonde-haired fellow came up to me. Uh, as best I can remember, that's how I'd describe him. A young, good-looking, keen fellow. And he, he picked my brains for a few minutes about how he might set up uh, some sort of safe mechanism for whistleblowers to ventilate uh, and publish the information they have. And we chatted for a little while, and then I, I forgot all about that. Until I visited Julian in Belmarsh Prison in February 2020, just as the pandemic was starting. And the man I saw in Belmarsh was not the man I had seen at the Melbourne Writers' Festival. By that stage, he'd been in Belmarsh maybe 12 months, virtually all of it in solitary confinement, following, uh, I think, seven years in the Ecuadorian embassy. And he was already a broken, sick man. He did his best to put up a brave face, put on a brave face, but he wasn't entirely successful. I saw someone who clearly was suffering, was the a victim of psychological torture, and was at wit's end. No wonder the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Nils Melsner, uh, and some of you would be familiar with his recent book, has made it abundantly clear that in his expert opinion, Julian Assange has been subject in Belmarsh Prison to psychological torture. I can only try and imagine what his state is now, and hence the urgency, the absolute urgency for busting him out of Belmarsh as quickly as humanly possible. So I take this opportunity one more time to call on the Australian government to urgently intervene and to fix this. Now, I have a lot of respect for Anthony Albanese, and I'm mindful that he said that recently that some things should not be handled with a megaphone. But frankly, we have given this government a fair bit of time now, and there seems to be no uh, no progress on getting him out. Now, I know, I know Albo has got to manage mixed feelings within the Labor Party and among the left about Julian, but I take this opportunity to say to Anthony again, when you boil it all down, this is all about a Walkley Award-winning Australian journalist who published hard evidence of US war crimes, and in response, the US wants to get even, and so long, the UK and Australia have been happy to go along for the ride because they've put their bilateral relationships with Washington ahead of the rights of a decent man, a hero, not a villain, and that is just plain wrong. Please maintain the rage. Keep the pressure on the new government. If we keep the pressure up, then I am confident that eventually justice will prevail for Julian.